Hey, New Hope, it's Friday, and I want to talk to you today about the third of the three reasons why we give as Christians. For review, the first reason is because we're commanded to do it. The second reason is that it guards our hearts from greed. And today we're going to talk about the third reason, which is to support the ministries of the church. And if you followed me uh, on the previous devotionals, you know I believe that it's very important that we understand about the tithe and that God gave specific instructions for it to be brought into the storehouse, which is the church. In 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, Paul even goes as far as saying, now concerning the collection for the saints, or the tithes, as I directed the churches in Galatia, so you do that also. On the first day of every week, that each one of you put aside and save as you may prosper. I'm not sure in this modern era it's important what day we give, but the idea that giving be consistent is very helpful so that the church can operate and function smoothly without relying on a lot of special offerings and campaigns. Also, that there are no strings attached, that it be given to the church and the church be trusted with its use. The next thing is that when we are obedient with our tithe, then God promises to rebuke the devourer. In other words, to hold Satan back from being able to steal the blessings of our financial obedience. And of course, it does guard our heart from greed when we realize that we are blessing God with our obedience. You know God's not mean about this. He doesn't expect us to give what we don't have. But since He is our great provider, I believe He gives us all that He knows we need, including that portion that He asks us for. If believers find themselves unable to be obedient with their tithe, it's my view that they need to talk with God about their stewardship, and about their priorities, and about how they're managing the resources that God has given them. If you remember, Jesus said in Luke 6, verse 38, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, they will pour into your lap. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Once again, the laws of the harvest, they always work. Well, that's a little bit of review from the previous devotionals. I want to emphasize today the third reason why we give. We give to support the ministries of the church. Nowadays, we take our tithes into the church. Going back to the Old Testament, we see where the very first commandment was given to tithe, and it was given with instruction as to how it was to be used for the operation and the ministries of the church. Obviously, culture has changed how that happens, but basically the tithe is given to the church, and it's used in the operation and the basic ministries of the church. The utilities, all the things that it takes to keep the doors open, to keep the wheels on, to keep the staff that we have, all those things are covered by the tithe our Sunday school, children's ministries, youth ministries, music, media ministries, and so on. As a church that's connected with the Church of the Nazarene, we also play our part in helping, as all churches are asked to do, to help with the support of district ministries right here in Southern Florida, and with helping to pay for retired ministers and missionaries. And we are part of a great world missions organization that's in approximately 165 countries with over 550 missionaries. We help support a missions organization that's very well run, very well respected, and is on the ground for all emergencies all over the world. And it stays long beyond the news cycle, helping people with their physical needs, with their emotional needs, as well as their spiritual needs. Probably the biggest ministry outflow from New Hope in our budget is the support of our New Hope Grace Evangelical School in port au -Pay, Haiti. Last year, prior to the COVID virus, and the unrest that happened in that country, we had 288 students, K through 12. Schools there were closed down last spring because of political unrest, and then barely got reopened in the fall, and then all the schools in the country were closed once again because of the COVID virus. Our school opened up two months ago, one of only a few in the region that are open. We currently have between 125 and 140 students we pay eight teachers to teach all 13 grades, plus a principal and an administrative assistant who is amazing at keeping the wheels on in the face of all that's going on in that country. We feed those children a meal once a day that comes right out of this church budget, helped by a number of very generous people in our church family who monthly support it. We also minister to the refuge ranch and the girls that are in that one-year treatment program there. It's a blessing to be able to help them and, and help support them. We're very active supporters of CareNet, the crisis pregnancy ministry in Martin and Port St. Lucie counties. A number of people from this church help us support that ministry as well as volunteer there and serve on the staff there. 
And as we are able, we help out Elevate Hope Ministry in East Stewart, reaching many marginalized families that are otherwise unable to get assistance. In the past, we've helped, and we still occasionally help, with the Lahaya Ministry for the homeless. We have our own food pantry, which we are able to procure food and some supplies to help people who need it and allow church family members to take food to minister to people in their neighborhoods or people that they know. And then we have our HeartQuest campaign, where we have asked the church family to step up and help us to retire the bonds used to build this auditorium, our upward sports program, and some other new ministries. HeartQuest funds are also used for staff development and to help us to be prepared in ministry for the growth that we are trusting that God will send our way. The funds for many of these things I've named, and I haven't named them all, are given as offerings. Offerings are also used to help us to be able to meet people's needs who find themselves out of home or out of work or in desperate need of temporary help financially. All of these things we try and do with the amount of funds that come in. And as you can imagine, the needs in our community are greater than the resources. And so I finish by reminding you that in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus directed us to give alms to the poor. Alms are anything given to relieve the poor. It could be money for food or clothing or shelter. But whatever we do, we're not supposed to do it in a way that draws attention to ourselves. However, we need to do it in a way that is observable so that others are encouraged to give as well. Just previously in the same discussion that Jesus was having with his disciples, he challenged them to let their light shine before men, let their good works be seen by men so that others would give God the glory and would be encouraged to do otherwise. Alms, as I understand it, is not giving away something that's ours, but rather making available to others what was God's before he gave it to us to use. So I challenge you to pray, to be faithful and obedient with what God has put into your hands. I am looking forward to seeing you Sunday.